Good afternoon, panellists, youth ambassadors, and of course, our audience for today. My name is Chloe, and I'll be your MC for tonight. Today, we gather in the Eureka Centre, the birthplace of Australian democracy, to acknowledge the power, presence, and perspective of our next generation of leaders, the City of Ballarat Youth Ambassadors, as they pitch a passion project which will help create positive change in our city. But before we get to that, could I please ask you to take the time to put all phones on silent. First, we would like to acknowledge the, tr the traditional custodians of the land we meet today, the Wathaurong people, as we recognise their continuing connection to the land and waterways that surround us. Today, democracy and listening are central to our mission, and one of the fundamental events that allowed us to be here was the Eureka Stockade. However, in that and the century of politics that followed, First Nations people were often some of the first to be overlooked, something we acknowledge in action alongside the project you'll hear about tonight. We would especially like to welcome our panellists today, Stacey Oliver and Zareen Jadwa. Stacey Oliver is the, new, is the newly stated Youth Services Coordinator with extensive knowledge in community, in community engagement as she has recently transitioned from a role with the Ballarat Foundation coordinating events such as Run for a Cause. Zareen Jadwa, a watchabolic person, works in LGBTQIA peer support at the Q Hub in Ballarat and has experience in outreach. The people we are hearing speak today are the City of Ballarat Youth Ambassadors, a collection of passionate young people who are determined to advocate for a future that will not only serve Ballarat and their current voting population, but also that of five, 10 and 15 years. Managed and led by youth services, the role of youth ambassadors is to, is to improve the quality of life of young people living and working in Ballarat through the employment of impact projects, projects delivered within Ballarat that are feasible pro positive outcomes. In previous years, Speak Up has seen the launch of podcasts, sustainability projects and domestic violence and bullying campaigns, all of which have seen massively successful results. Over the past four weeks, we have been here at the Eureka Centre practicing in a series of workshops exploring Australia's democratic foundations and the idea of active citizenship, led by the Centre's education team. Today, we're continuing that legacy by pitching these passion projects to our audience of families, key stakeholders and panellists. After I finish speaking, there will be five speeches, each followed by feedback from our panellists. Each pitch you hear today is connected not only to democracy, but also to the Ballarat Youth Strategy, a funding allocation document that enables us to stand here today. Drawing from the five focus areas on the strategy, each group has chosen a topic that is actionable, affects young people in Ballarat and matters deeply to them. After each group presents, our panellists will then, will then present feedback as realistically and as harshly as they would like, as if this was a pitch inside council chambers or the Victorian Parliament. We politely ask that they don't hold back. <laughs> Just a quick reminder that tonight's presentation is being recorded and that is accessible on the Eureka Centre's YouTube page. And with that note, I'd like to welcome our first group, Arjun, Harry, Jerry and and Rajiv, who will be discussing the importance of educating Ballarat youth about the benefits of healthy eating and physical education. But before that, I'd also like to remind you to please hold your end until, please hold your applause to the end of all the speeches, so until everyone on the team has finished. Our first team will now come up. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, what does everyone in this room, all the students in Ballarat, all the teachers in Ballarat, all the parents in Ballarat, what do we all have in common? Any ideas? We want to be okay, it's a good start. <laughs> we all want to be healthy. We want to live a healthy life, be mentally healthy, physically healthy, and have healthy connections and relationships with everyone else. My name's Harry. I'm a Year 12 at Ballarat Clarendon, and I came with a rough upbringing, not in regards to my home condition, but in regards to physically. When I was first born, I was deemed to be a quadru quadriplegic and was thought to be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life if I went out of the hospital. Born over two months prematurely, my parents were deemed with the task of turning my legs from jelly into something that could actually move. Now, through educational nutrition and physical health and the actual benefits they can provide to an individual, I was able to become someone that could actually cope 
with moving. It took me weeks and weeks just to be able to learn how to move and, like, I guess, re um, gain coordination between my limbs if I just had a simple breathe in my legs. Through my education that my parents provided me of learning nutrition and how much a benefit physical health is, I was able to learn how to walk, eat, talk, all those things. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a bit nervous. Um, now, everyone in the old, probably the older people in the room might know this, not sure about the youth ambassadors, but has anyone ever seen those food, that Australian picture, and it's like this big plate with all the colourful food on it. It's a balanced picture of all the different foods. Now, has anyone actually referenced that when they went to eat something? Completely useless. No one thinks about that. As a group, we want to implement strategies for the youth community of Ballarat, which we have, we're in touch with, with all the different sports and communities, clubs and schools we're a part of, to provide more realistic and accurate nutritional um, education on, and physical health and how it benefits everyone else. Let's ditch the textbooks and start to learn about something actually useful for our lives. Let's learn about Project Nutrito. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jerry, and I think we all believe that at Ballarat, we recognize the importance of promoting healthy eating among young people. And we sincerely believe that nutrition edu education is the key to achieving that goal. So with that objective in mind, we propose Project Nutrito, aimed at raising awareness of moderate eating, a concept centered around choosing food that sustainably fill our bodies and keeping us satisfied and energized for longer. Our initiative targets not only improve health and well-being for our peers, but also present a learning opportunity for students beyond the classroom. Collaborating closely with the Council of Sport and Rec team, our plans firstly involves developing visual and intuitive infographics that reflects balanced eating principles. Secondly, we intend to prepare interactive PowerPoint presentations to be implemented in secondary schools, engaging fellow students like us in exploring the advantages of moderation and informed food choices. Thirdly, we also plan on hosting workshops alongside regional sports clubs like the Minor Dome and the Selkirk Stadium, equipping youth with practical knowledge on the positive impact of prudent eating habits on their physical and mental health and also educating young athletes on the benefits of judicial food choices on their performance in games. Lastly, we aim to work with these sport clubs and event organizers to ensure that healthy foods choices are available at venues attended by young people, granting them access to a wide range of healthier alternatives other than the junk food you see in the vending machines. Ultimately, through these in combined endeavors, we aspire to equip all students with the resources and expertise to pursue and maintain sustainable eating habits and in order for them to pursue their own heart's desire. Good afternoon, my name is Raghu. Today, I'll present my speech on why you should join Project Nutrito. Why should you join our project? You can ensure our project will have longevity by educating the coaches, not only the athletes. This will continue as athletes want to maximize performance. It is something that everyone can most likely relate to. It is applicable to a big part of the community of Ballarat. Through this project, we will be able to help the youth develop healthy eating habits that reduces the risks of poor mental and physical health. By introducing the idea of healthy eating to venues and organisations, our project will gain recognition and through our effort, these ideas will be carried on by coaches who will continue to promote judicial food choices even after this year. As this is what most can relate to, our project will be able to apply to almost all students and youth, allowing a wide range of audiences to be able to, expo to be exposed to our project. Thank you for listening.
Eat better from the field, play better on the field. Good afternoon, audience and fellow presenters. My name is Arjun Tipper, and I am the fourth and final speaker for our team. I'll be talking about the major action that will be taken to initiate Project Nutrito, as well as summarizing the goal of our project. To begin with, partnering with sporting clubs and associations across Ballarat is the first and most preliminary step to initiate Project Nutrito. We can ask to partner with sporting clubs and associations, such as Ballarat Table Tennis, Ballarat Cricket Association, the Miners, Minor Dome Sports Club, Volleyball Ballarat, Selkirk Stadium, and many more. Our second speaker, Jerry, talked about developing visual and intuitive infographics that reflect balanced eating principles, as well as creating interactive PowerPoint presentations and hosting workshops alongside regional sports clubs to not only educate young athletes on the benefits of judicial food choices, but also secondary school students and young people in general. These combined endeavors will lead to a larger engagement in sport, healthier eating habits, and connections and friendships in the sporting community. This project can act as a springboard for the aspirations and dreams of young people while also promoting crucial skills and knowledge that will remain with young people for the rest of their lives. This project can positively impact the mental and physical health of young people, and this project can overall help address the imminent issues of childhood obesity and extreme eating habits. The goal of this project is not just about supporting the sporting and athletic population of youngsters, but rather the goal is to instill important knowledge that will impact all youngsters in Ballarat and potentially make them live happier, healthier, and longer lives through balanced eating. Ultimately, as a team, we would like to introduce Project Nutrito to educate young people on the benefits of healthy eating, alongside encouraging physical activities and sporting participation. Thank you for taking the time to listen and consider our project. Eat better from the field, play better on the field. We'd now like to invite our second group, Quinn, Alice and Maggie and Christiana, who are speaking on educating Ballarat secondary schools on homelessness in our city. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maggie and I'm here today with my teammates, Alice, who will be speaking next, Quinn, who will be speaking third, and Christiana, who will be speaking last. We are here to discuss youth homelessness in, our, in relation to Youth Strategy 3, Focus Section Area, Living and Learning. In our everyday, most of us have access to three meals per day, a permanent roof over our heads, and running water. However, as we know, not everyone experiences these luxuries. Homelessness is often regarded as the destitute people in our community that we see sleeping on the streets, but 94% of homelessness is invisible to the public eye. This includes couch surfing, living in a car, or temporary accommodations like hostels. As Mission Australia reports, in Australia, 15,800 kids don't have a safe, secure, permanent home, and therefore don't have access to a beneficial environment to further their development. Homelessness relief right here in Ballarat has been the highest ever in a decade. Furthermore, there are 62 young people at risk under the age of 25, as reported by the Courier, as interest rates and cost of living has been skyrocketing. Could you even imagine sleeping outside in the cold Ballarat weather as winter approaches, or even the uncertainty of not knowing where to do your homework after school? Thank you. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Alice. Linking on from Maggie's point, I'll be outlining how we're planning to execute the project. We selected a problem posed in the youth strategies of advocating for housing. It is also a challenge that the City of Ballarat is trying to overcome through the Homelessness Protocol 2022. Our project is named the Youth Homelessness Education. We'll be creating slideshows and posters with infographics that are easy to access and specifically made for young people. We'll display at the schools and around our community. In this slideshow, we'll include lived experiences, statistics to expose and raise awareness about the issue, and links to charities to provide service for those in need. These necessities don't have to be expensive. We donate clothing like socks, canned food, and non-perishables. 
We will list phone numbers to contact if you are faced with this problem and branches to charities and relief, relief programs that you can reach out to. Imagine coming home to a shelter after a freezing helpless night and be greeted with these warm, welcoming, loving gifts from people in our own community. By carrying out this project, we can make an advancement to a safer, happier and healthier environment. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Quinn, and I am here to tell you about how and why our project is so beneficial and could make such a huge difference within our community. As Maggie touched on before, the image our community, even specifically the teenage community, has of homeless people or homeless youth is the minuscule number of people we see sleeping on the streets in our day-to-day -day lives. But what is homelessness really? A statistic from Community Support Frankston states that it takes an average of two whole years for a homeless youth to deplete all of their resources and to actually end up on the streets. So much happens for so many people behind what our community sees as homelessness, and this is why our project is so important. By integrating learning materials and opportunities about homelessness, the things teenagers learn will stay with them long after they graduate school. And once our team has successfully implemented presentations and posters and workshops, we fully intend for each learning device to stay with the schools many years after this one. By educating Ballarat's youth, Ballarat's future, my classmates, my friends, our Youth Ambassadors team here tonight, we can step up and make change. And by supporting our project, the change could start here, right now, with all of you. Thank you. Good afternoon, esteemed guests, parents, and fellow Youth Ambassadors. My name is Christiana. I stand before you alongside my dedicated teammates, Quinn, Maggie, and Alice, united by a cause that demands urgent attention, youth homelessness in our beloved community of Ballarat. Let's not merely view this as a statistical issue. Let's recognize the human faces behind these numbers, the young individuals struggling to find stability and security in their lives. Recent reports reveal a staggering 20% increase in youth homelessness within our city over the past year alone. These aren't just figures. They represent the harsh realities faced by our youth, uncertain about their futures without a stable roof over their heads. Maggie has brought to light the often overlooked facets of homelessness, those who couch surf, live in cars, or find temporary refuge, temporary accommodations. These are individuals who may, seem indivi who may seem invisible to us, but their struggles are real and immediate. Alice presented a concrete plan of action, the Youth Homelessness Education Program. Through this initiative, we aim not only to raise awareness, but to provide tangible support to those in need. And finally, Quinn laments on how, un how an uneducated society hinders the progression and betterment of our community the stigma that homeless youth face every day, their education and commitment from our schools we, that we desire. Youth homelessness education could help save lives. Our project is not just a standalone effect. It aligns closely with the goals outlined in the Ballarat Youth Strategy, particularly in focus section three. By providing accessible education materials and posters, we can empower our youth with the tools they need to overcome the challenges they face. Together, as a team, we are resolute in our mission to address youth homelessness in our community. But we cannot achieve this alone. We need your support, your commitment, and your leadership. With your backing, we can transform our vision into reality and pave the way for a brighter future for our youth. Thank you for our attention and we eagerly await the opportunity to work together towards this noble cause. Thank you. We'd now like to welcome Corey, Cooper and Om, who are focusing on bullying and finding sustainable solutions that will deliver tangible long-term results. Hello, my name is Om, and today I, with Cooper, our second speaker, and Quarry, our third speaker, will discuss how to combat bullying. Cooper will explain 
explain how we will combat bullying in the plethora of forms it comes in. And Corey will summarize how this issue affects all who reside in Ballarat and explain how our project is an effective barrier and something crucial to combat bullying. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you think, why should we care about bullying? We are not victims. Well, an article in The Age stated that in 2015, Ballarat was the most heavily torn region by bullying, with 25% of students affected. Think about this. How would you feel if your own child was facing numerous taunts or was being physically abused? Similarly, a parent of a victim of bullying has to face the same trauma of bullying. Our youth strategy focus area targets those who are 12 to 25 years of age and focuses on health and well-being physically, emotionally and socially. We cannot just stare at it and express our sorrow. Is it fair for a student to have to sacrifice their ambitions just because their mental health is at risk? Anyone who believes it is not atrocious behaviour to bully or even harass someone for fun or to let out their emotions must rethink twice instead of blindly tormenting an innocent school student. It's absolutely horrific absolutely petty and absolutely abysmal that 29% of students have finished their education only at year 10, just due, to, just due to some vicious and brazen bullies. Now, I will pass on to Cooper, our second speaker. Hi, I'm Cooper, and I would like to introduce our project, Brace Against Bullying. Our project idea is a counselling program, but the difference between our idea and every other school counsellor is that our program is meant to be and will be more comfortable, fun and beneficial for the student. The way we can make this concept work is by getting two students facing similar issues to meet with a teacher or health and wellbeing worker outside of school in a public safe space. As a student who has had numerous interactions with school counsellors, I would feel much more comfortable and less embarrassed talking to someone my age who understands what I'm going through. By implementing this project, we'll be hitting not one, but two of the focus areas in the youth strategy. The first one is safety, targeting the bullying prevention action. Our project is also in line with the activating safe spaces action in the connected community focus area. I can tell you right now, this project is so, so important to the youth community in Ballarat and the stats don't deny it. In the youth strategy, it is stated that 49% of young people have been concerned for their safety and 28% said that bullying was the biggest issue. This simply isn't good enough and something needs to change. I would just like to add that we realise our project is quite similar to the Live for Life program, but we think that both programs would work well together and ours is slightly different and has different benefits. Thank you, here's Corey. Bullying is an issue. Bullies were terrible at my school. Well, I knew lots of people, people who experienced it. A place where people can go oh, to talk to others in this, this situation would help well, people get away from the bullies. People would, people would feel safer if there was a place they could get it away. How would you feel if you were in this kind of nightmare? What would you do? We have to do something about this or more children will be lost. We'd like to welcome up our next group, Zanuli, Nettu and Ruby, who are pitching how we could actively and effectively prevent drugs and alcohol consumption in teens and young adults. Good 
afternoon, everyone, panel, panelists, and other distinguished guests and visitors. I'm Natu, a year eight student at Ballarat Clarendon College. And today, I will be talking about a widespread issue that is tormenting our youth, the use of illicit drugs, known as recreational substances, and tobacco. But firstly, what are illicit drugs? Drugs are naturally or artificially made substances, typically used as a medicine. However, when placed in the wrong hands, drugs are taken for pleasure and become a potentially life-threatening addiction. In 2019 alone, 24% of young Australians, that is approximately 768,000 people, engaged in the illicit use of drugs, and that number is only rising. Another pressing issue is smoking and the relatively new use of e-cigarettes in teens and young adults, ranging disguises from pens to medical devices. E-cigarettes, like regular cigarettes, contain nicotine, an addictive ingredient, which is in fact classified as a poison in Australia. Unfortunately, not only are e-cigarettes poorly regulated, but they also have a marketed misconception of being safer than traditional, than traditional cigarettes. Already, more than 50 people have died from e-cigarettes worldwide, and thousands more have developed irreversible lung conditions, such as COPD and lung cancers. However, our kids aren't the only ones at fault. According to a recent poll conducted by the Royal Children's Hospital Melbourne, 57% of parents have never discussed drugs or smoking with their children. One in three parents are unaware that e-cigarettes contain toxins and chemicals, while a further 40% do not believe that smoking can lead to death. Do you really think so many people would take drugs or vape if they, if they knew just how detrimental they were to our health? Without the right information to guide them, our kids are running into a world full of danger that will ultimately lead them to morbidity and mortality with numerous social and economic ramifications. I'll now hand over to Danuri to explain how we plan to tackle this important issue. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denoy, and I'm a Year 7 student at Ballarat Clarendon College. And today I will be talking about the drug and tobacco crisis. Imagine your life spiralling out of control, experiencing despair, dread and guilt as you realise that a successful life has just slipped away. All because of one wrong choice. In the future, every day could be a reminder of how you can't run from the life that you ruined. Does anyone deserve this? However, if only you could have more ways to seek help, you could have escaped from these problems. This is why the youth drug and tobacco crisis is a major social issue. As per the City of Ballarat Youth Strategy Report, 43% of youths living in Ballarat are concerned about the misuse of alcohol and other drugs. While working on the project, we made sure that we comply with the City of Ballarat's health and wellbeing strategic plans, health and social services, livability domains. There has been over 12% of youths using drugs and alcohol in Ballarat. As a part of the youths, United Youth of Ballarat, we must move forward to the project called Facts Not Fear Ballarat. This project will put QR codes around public spaces such as shops, public transport and high schools as 31% of teens use public transport and a total of 72% of um, people aged 19 to 23 year olds say that they are using public transport too. The QR codes will provide essential resources, the list of the most dangerous drugs, the contents of certain drugs and safe places to get tested for overdosing. For example, fentanyl, a deadly substance found in cocaine, heroin and other addictive drugs, over 150 people worldwide die every day because of complications with synthetic opioids such as fentanyl. Also, educational institutions can help you or your children. 
these includes my task. They will go to schools around Ballarat and teach children about the dangers of these detrimental recreational substances. Furthermore, this will give information that will stay with teenagers for the rest of their life. Clearly, we, this, we will increase awareness of the drug and tobacco crisis. Now we'll hand it over to Ruby to sum up our case. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ruby, a Year 10 from Woodman's Hill Secondary College. As the final speaker of my team's case, I'd like to re reiterate the importance of the drug and tobacco issue in teens. These recreational substances have been going on for too long and we need to stop it now. In 2022 alone, 549 young people died from illicit drug use. How can we just sit here and allow our children, our future, to vanish so easily and suddenly? But there are always solutions to every problem. By setting up QR codes around schools and public transport, shopping centres and others, we can help bring attention and to inform people about the risks and dangers of drugs and smoking. Furthermore, we can ed use educational organisations such as Smart Ass to educate children about the hazards of recreational substances. But most importantly, we could set up accessible overdose centres and clinics for teens and young adults. For example, Ballarat provides testing centres and clinics for teens, oh sorry, <laughs> testing centres and fent fentanyl testing strips to detect the presence of fentanyl, a fatal substance that is often added to drugs and hair such as heroin and cocaine. However, 36% of deaths of Australians 13 years and younger are from fentanyl overdoses. Why? Because very few people know about it, let alone have the access to these facilities. By opening more drug testing clinics, we are saving lives, we are saving our children, we are saving our future. Let's all get up and take a stand against these recreational substances before it's too late. Thank you. Finally, we have Jacob who will now speak about how services in Ballarat need to be adapted to meet the needs of young parents and those expecting. Alrighty, I am a one-man show, so just stick with me. Um, okay, so today I want to shed light on a crucial topic. The importance of providing meaningful support networks for teenagers who find themselves pregnant. It's an issue that demands our attention, empathy, and action. First and foremost, let's recognize that teenage pregnancy is not a moral failing, rather a complex intersection of circumstances. Many teenagers who become pregnant are facing difficult situations such as low socioeconomic status, lack of comprehensive sex education, and inadequate access to contraceptives. Blaming and shaming only exacerbates their struggles. Instead, what these young parents need is understanding, compassion, and a network. They need a network of support to help them navigate this journey. This project hopes to provide this for young people and those expecting. Teenage pregnancy is not just a statistic. It's a reality that deeply impacts the, the lives of young people and their communities. When a teenager discovers they are pregnant, they face a myriad of challenges, physical, emotional, and social. In such a vulnerable moment, access to meaningful support becomes absolutely essential. It is clear to see, however, that the challenges that young parents face are deeper than what they may appear on the surface. Issues such as homelessness, mental illness, and poor health literacy often complicate teenage pregnancies. It is bigger than just the pregnancy itself, it is the underlying factors associated. Addressing social, economic, nutritional, psychological, as well as medical needs is more likely to result in better pregnancy outcomes for the mother and their child. Moreover, support networks offer emotional support, which is equally crucial. Teenage pregnancy can be overwhelming and isolating, especially when faced with the judgment and stigma from society. Having someone to turn to for help and information can make all the difference in helping these young parents cope with the trials and tribulations that teen pregnancy can invoke. 
The ways in which we can help improve the quality of life for the parents as well as the child is through advocating to work alongside two key community stakeholders. We could advocate to work alongside Ballarat Health Services to ensure adequate information and knowledge about their services is obtained by the parents or those expecting and ensure that these services are accessible outside work and school hours and include other valuable amendments that can make the biggest difference for these young people. These modest changes will allow these individuals to curb the statistics, such as the fact that compared to women aged 20 to 29, the risk of dying from a pregnancy-related cause is twice for those aged 15 to 19 and five times for those aged 10 to 14. If individuals who are pregnant had the ability to access the level of care they need whilst also pursuing their educational or career goals, it would be my guess that we would see this statistic drop. We could also advocate to work alongside Parent Place, who has the capacity to provide pregnant teenagers with the resources they need to make informed decisions about their health and future. This would include access to healthcare services for the parent and child, as well as prenatal care, playgroup, and daycare. This would be done in conjunction with those who have or are experiencing teen pregnancy to ensure that the amendments are targeted to these individuals. These services are not only to ensure the well-being of the parent, but also to contribute to the healthy development of the child, while simultaneously allowing the parent to maintain engage, to engage, sorry, to engage meaningfully in school, work, or other self-growth endeavours. Unfortunately, many of Parent Place's resources are not available outside school hours, and their opening hours are 9:30 a.m. to 2:30 p.m meaning that should a young parent want to remain in high school, unless they have a well-founded support network of individuals who could take their child to and from parent place, these parents would have to miss roughly a quarter of their school day just to access parent place. Additionally, we would advocate and engage community stakeholders in the creation of a bus stop near parent place. Currently, the two closest bus stops include a couple hundred metres walk up and down arguably the steepest part of Sturt Street. With our current system, it is increasingly difficult to access Parent Place as an individual with a child or potentially multiple. This is an issue that needs immediate addressing if any work is to be done in expanding the service of Parent Place. We cannot expect a parent with a young child to cross over four lanes of traffic combined with a steep hill it is simply unfair and barriers like this only add to the difficulty of being a teen parent. With both Ballarat Health Services and Parent Place, our overall aim would be to advocate for modest changes to be made that can make the world of difference for these young parents. We would aim to develop an information-based campaign that is distributed to schools that allow students to identify whether these services are relevant to them and where and how to access them. Meaningful support networks empower pregnant teenagers to continue their education and pursue their goals. With the right support in place, many teenagers can achieve academic success and career success while navigating parenthood. Support networks play a vital role in breaking the cycle of poverty and inequality. By providing resources and assistance to pregnant teenagers, we can build a brighter future for themselves and their children. When we invest in the well-being of young parents, we invest in the prosperity of our community. In conclusion, the importance of creating and advocating for better access to Ballarat Health Services and Parent Place for pregnant teenagers cannot be overstated. By offering compassion, resources and empowerment, we can help these young people navigate the challenges of teen pregnancy and build a better future for themselves and their children. Let's stand together in support of pregnant teenagers and ensure that they have the tools and opportunities they need to thrive. Thank you. And with that, our presentation night has come to a close. Well done to all the groups who presented today, especially the people who are new to the group. We'd like to give special thanks to our wonderful panelists, 
Stacey and Zareen for their time and feedback, the Eureka Centre staff, especially Sarah and Nelson for their continued guidance on the pitches, our youth facilitators, Suze and Brendan for their support, and lastly, our audience, everyone who was invited here today, family, friends, and stakeholders. 